guys a rundown on a super simple product by Slingshot that I think you're really going to love. It's the Slingshot Sup Winder. And what it basically is, is a stick-on A-box that can, can apply to the bottom of any standard hard sup. And when you insert the nice big keel fin, it allows you to turn any normal SUP board that you had sitting around collecting dust into an awesome wing surfing board that you can use with a sling wing, go out and back, stay up wind, tack and jibe. So it really just turns your old SUP board into a training tool for the sling wing and allows you to stay up wind when you're wing surfing. It comes with this awesome 3M super sticky material. You line it up straight, stick it on the bottom of your SUP board, and then you put your keel fin in. Now you can stay upwind with a sling wing. If you want to use your board for standard paddling, you just remove the big keel fin. This stays on nice and streamlined and you can paddle like normal. So I think you guys are going to love it. Wind sports people are going to love it especially. And it all comes down to the kids. It's wind sports people. We all want our kids to be out there playing in the water and the wind with us. Our nieces and our nephews. And the cool thing about the sling wing and wings in general is that kids absolutely love playing with them at the beach. Kids love to grab a sling wing on any windy beach. They can run and jump and sheet in, get extra hang time. They can jump off dunes with them. And then the whole time that they're playing with the wing on the beach in the wind, they're learning about the wind. They're learning about wind direction, the wind clock, and how to operate a sail. They're basically becoming little sailors, even though they haven't even gotten on the water yet. And so this simple product allows you to take that old SUP board that you have and bridge that gap and get the kids from playing with the wing on the beach to actually hitting on the water and being out there with you sailing back and forth. The other thing is, as wind sports people, we all have those family and friends who come to town for the weekend and they simply don't have enough time to enroll them in windsurf lessons or a week of kite lessons, but we would love them to get out there and have some fun with us. And they're just gonna be able to go out there and play and be on the water and engage in wind sports for the first time without a dedicated week of lessons. So it's just the fastest way to get into wind sports. It's absolutely huge. And, you know, as a wind sports person myself, Oftentimes you go to the beach and there's not enough to go kiting, there's not enough to get up on foil, but you still want to go out there and get wet. With a SUP Winder, you can explore your local waterways, you can get upwind, sail back downwind, just have a total blast in the lightest of breeze. So it really just gives new life to that old SUP board you have there sitting around collecting dust and allows you to get your family and friends out who are just in town for the day and it bridges that gap for kids between playing with the wing on the beach and actually getting out onto the water. It's an awesome, awesome tool for all of that. If you're not a wind sports person, the SUP Winder allows you to go into a shop, buy a wing, buy a SUP Winder, and take that board you already own and get out there the same day and get on the water. You don't need the lessons. You can just go out and play around. I mean, a wing is really safe. It's inflatable. It's soft. You have a leash to the wing. You have a leash to the board. It's a great way to really shorten your entry time to get into wind sports. You don't need a lot of lessons, a five minute explanation of how to hold it. You can go down to the beach and get out there and ride. It's going to put new life into that old SUP you have. Your first day with a SUP winder and a sling wing, you're going to be going way faster than you ever have paddling that board. So whether you're a wind sports athlete or a non-wind sports athlete, it's just a great tool and an inexpensive way to start a whole new sport. So now you got a little rundown on the SUP winder. We're going to talk about the best practices, where to use it, and how to get started. Before you hit the water with your SUP winder and your sling wing, you want to make sure that you've played with it on land for a while in a good stiff breeze and really got some wing control. The idea would be to go to some place that has a good amount of wind blowing and just really spend some time playing with the wing on land, sheeting it in, sheeting it out, getting good control over it. 
the wing control you have on land and how much time you spend doing that is going to determine how successful you are at riding the board with a subwinder right away. What you want to do is start on your knees. And the first problem people will find is that the wing is flipped over. So you want to start on your knees or if you have a board that's great, but you want to learn how to flip it over. What you do is anytime it's flipped over, you move your way towards the wing tip. Your wing tip hand goes on top, your other hand goes on bottom and you just flip it downwind and then reel it in really quick with the leash so it doesn't flip over again. That's totally key. The next thing is you want to practice flying the wing on your knees, which simulates how you're going to start on the subwinder. You want to hold the leading edge handle with your back hand. That frees up your front hand to grab the forward handle. Now I've got it here in the neutral position. Get some good control just flying it in the neutral position by only holding the forward handle or even the transfer handle. And what I want to practice is pulling in a little bit with my back hand, but keeping that wing tip from hitting the water. If that wing tip hits the water, you're going to have the wing flip over and you have to start from the beginning. So practice holding it here above your head, dipping a wing tip a little bit, taking it back up to the sky again. Just get a good degree of control there. Then maybe you'll grab the farther back handle, especially if the wind is light. And now practice standing to your feet, usually front foot first and then your back foot. You're just going to play with controlling the wing, powering it up, pulling in on your backhand, depowering it by letting go of your backhand. You can play with the other handles, the transfer handle and the Y handles to get a different feel for it. You can practice holding the sail to the back and putting weight on your back foot to go upwind, holding it towards the front of the board, putting weight on your front foot to go downwind, and just holding it cruising around, getting a really good degree of control. After you spend 20-30 minutes like that, you're going to feel like you can sheet in, you can lean back. The next thing you're going to have to practice is switching direction. So what I'm going to do for that is release my backhand, hold the wing over my head, switch hands, switch front hands, grab the back, and now I'm going the opposite direction. Again, I want to switch directions. Release the back hand, switch front hands, grab the new back hand, and just transferring from going one direction to the other. The big inflatable leading edge is always in front, but you want to know how to switch directions. So now that I've got a good degree of control, woo, playing with this wing in a good stiff breeze, now it's fun and I can like run, catch the breeze, jump, get extra hang time. And this is why kids pick it up so quick, because kids will play for hours on the beach just with their wing running and jumping in the air. And they just learn such good wing control and wing skills during that. So before you hit the water with your subwinder, make sure you take it down to the beach, find some place with a good stiff breeze, and spend some time familiarizing yourself with the wing and getting good wing control. It's really going to help. All right, so. We're continuing to talk about the subwinder stick on keel, how to use it with the sling wing. And what we're going to talk about today is just best practices, what kind of conditions to go out in and where you want to go to learn how to do this. So the first thing is you kind of want pretty light wind. You want something between five and 15 miles an hour. That'll give you enough power to go, but not so much that you're just blown down wind right away. So the subwinder allows you to stay upwind, but it takes a little bit of practice to figure out how to do that. In any wind sport, whether it's windsurfing or kiting or sailing, your first thing you have to learn is how to stay upwind and not get blown down with the wind. In any wind sport, we don't talk about left or right. We only have two directions, and that's upwind and downwind. So right now, the wind is at my back blowing straight downwind. The best place to try this out is someplace where there's land downwind of you. So right here, if I were to get blown with the wind, I'd have nice shore to land on. You want a lot of beach downwind of you or someplace that you can land downwind of you. The other thing you can do is learn how to self-rescue. It's very important. We teach it in kiting. We teach it in windsurfing. How to get back upwind if there's not enough wind or you haven't been able to figure it out yet. 
So it's quite easy. I'll show you how right now. The basics of the, the uh, self-rescue is just to put the wing crossways, as it's oriented right now, on the back of the board, and then lay my feet over the inflated part, and then I can just paddle just like a surfer upwind. And with a nice big sup board, you'll make a lot of ground really fast. Here it goes. Once you've played with the wing on land for a while and got a feeling for how it works, the next step to learning how to wing surf and using your SUP winder is to learn a bit about wind, wind direction, and a concept we either call irons or the wind clock. In sailing, they call it irons. In windsurfing, we call it the wind clock. The basic concept here is that the entire time that you're on your board, your board is at the very center of a giant clock. So you're in the middle of a big circle, a big clock. Straight upwind, the direction the wind is coming from, is always 12 o'clock. Straight downwind is always 6 o'clock. And you can never go straight upwind at 12 o'clock. And irons, or the no-go zone, is everything between 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock. If you find the nose of your board pointing between 10 and 2, you're going to lose all forward momentum and slowly start to drift backwards. So ideally in wing surfing or wind surfing, we're sailing across the wind at three and nine, three and nine, three and nine, nine and three. You can wind surf downwind, wing surf downwind, but you just can't go into irons. If I point straight at 12, between 10 and two is irons, you'll stall out and just start to drift back. The next piece is that you've always got to have the wing on the downwind side of the board to start. So if the board is, you want the board lined up at nine or three, you want the sail on the downwind side towards six and the wind is at your back. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab my leash, put it on, get to my knees with the board pointed at either nine or three, pull the wing in. If it's flipped upside down, you're going to have to be able to flip it over. You're going to move towards the wingtip, put one hand under, another hand over the top, and flip the wing over. Then you can reel it in close, grab your leading edge handle, sails on the downwind side of the board, pick it up over your head, get the normal handles, stand up, and you're riding. To change direction, to go upwind, we're gonna lean the wing towards the back of the board and put our weight on our back foot. That's gonna cause the nose of the board to turn upwind. That's fine to go upwind, it's ideal to go upwind, but if we leave that sail back and too much weight on our back foot, the board will keep turning until it's pointing straight at 12 o'clock. There'll be no power in the sail and you'll just kind of lose all four momentum and start to drift back. If your nose of your board is pointing between 10 and two in that no-go zone, you've got to get more downwind. The way you do that is by leaning the wing towards the nose of the board and putting weight on your front foot. That causes the nose of the board to turn downwind. Now I kind of hold it right in the middle and I'll keep going across the wind. If I leave the sail forward towards the nose of the board for too long, the nose will just keep turning downwind until I'm pointing straight downwind at six o'clock and I'll lose a lot of ground and get stuck downwind pretty quick. So if I'm pointing too much downwind, I want to lean the wing towards the back of the board and that'll cause the board to start turning back upwind. If I'm pointing back across at nine or three, I hold the wing right in the middle to keep going my direction and I can make little adjustments. Lean the wing back for just a second, turn up wind a little bit, get it back to my normal middle stance. If I wanna go downwind a little bit, lean it back forward for just a second, the nose will go downwind, 
back to middle for center stance. The important thing is that you are always in the center of this giant clock. And you want to win surf at nine and three, nine and three. Anytime you get pointed straight up wind at 12 or in the no-go zone, anywhere between 10 and two, you're going to start to stall out and drift backwards downwind. It's important to understand the concept of wind direction and irons or the no-go zone. It'll really help you stay up with. Now that you've learned about wind, wind directions, upwind versus downwind, the concept of the wind clock and not being able to sail directly upwind or anywhere into the no-go zone, the next logical step is to teach you how to turn around. What we're gonna teach you is an upwind turn called the tack, which will help you stay upwind. Now check out my tacking technique. I'm gonna lean the wing towards the back of the board and step back to turn upwind. Once the nose goes past straight upwind, I'm gonna step forward for balance Bring the wing over my head and switch hands. Lean it forward to get going more across the wind. Once I'm pointing the direction I want, I bring the wing back again. Now check out my tacking technique. I'm gonna lean the wing towards the back of the board and step back to turn up wind. Once the nose goes past straight up wind, I'm gonna step forward for balance. Bring the wing over my head and switch hands. Lean it forward to get going more across the wind. Once I'm pointing the direction I want, I bring the wing back again to the middle position to continue in that direction. Maybe I want to go upwind a little bit more, so I'll lean it back for a second, and then back to middle position. That should be all you need to know to get on the water with your slingshot sup winder, your regular old sup board, and your sling wing. We've got another video about how to properly apply it to the bottom of your board with some really helpful hints there. And now hopefully you can bridge the gap between kids playing with the wing on land and actually getting onto the water and realize what a great tool this is for family and friends to come out there and enjoy wind sports with you. If you're a wind sports person and you're wondering why we didn't include learning how to jibe in this video, I taught windsurfing for many, many years and you never want to teach people how to do a jibe because they're going to do one anyways. And the jibe makes you lose a bunch of ground and head downwind, whereas the tack, just like the supwinder, helps you stay upwind. So keep tacking.